afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Ross. You should hopefully see me in a, a yellow box somewhere on your screen. Uh, you probably signed up from my uh, kind of Eventbrite page or my newsletter directly. I'm Ross Teacher Toolkit. Um, I'm going to introduce everyone and just tell you the format. You'll be pleased to know there are no slides. No slides. So some of you might like slides. Uh, so tough. There's none. Um, so you're going to get the recording later and I'll introduce uh, people. Um, so just to make sure you're in the right place uh, with all the high links we clicked today, you might have clicked the wrong link. So you're in a webinar with me, Ross Teacher Toolkit, and with Matt Pearson from LBQ and Victoria Morris, uh, Primary Head Teacher. I'm going to introduce those uh, to you shortly. Uh, we've got 500 people sign up. Many people are going to be watching this uh, recorded later. And thank you for everyone for joining live. Um, so I guess uh, just kind of technicalities and things. The chat box comes to me only. OK, so if you could just uh, say hello where you're watching from, I can give you a shout out. So if you want your town or city uh, made public and get some airtime, now's your chance. So tell me where you're watching from. Who's got the most snow? Hi, Jill from, I can't pronounce that name, Chet Chetwind, Chetwind. Okay, Stoke-on-Trent, Hornchurch, no snow. Izmir, Turkey, wow. Burry, not too far from you, Matt. Okay. Just over the hill. Woodley, I don't know where Woodley is. Dublin, Birmingham, Pontefract. I actually was, I've been to most of these places before lockdown, but uh, I've been stuck at home for a year. Dubai, uh, thanks for watching. Got these chat, I can't keep up all your comments. I'm already suffering from cognitive load. <laughs> um, okay. Right, so I'll give it a couple more minutes for everyone uh, tunes in. So thank you for that. Um, one more question, I guess, from me before we get started. Uh, what's your current headache? What's the headache um, at the moment? Too much homework, too much remote learning, trying to homeschool. Uh, just ping a few comments through and I'll read one or two out. I'm going to put a nice little survey on your screen, just three simple questions, uh, and then I'll show those. So what are the problems we've got? Google Classroom. Assessment and marking, too much screen time for kids, yep. Juggling everything, including uh, homeschooling and cooking. Student participation, student engagement. Okay, what else, what else? Okay, live marking, AFL, the amount of workload. Working more hours, everybody, or, or fewer hours? I suspect it's uh, lots more, lots more. Okay, I will, I will stop posing through the provocations. Um, so just before I start, I'll just get um, Victoria to, uh, to take over and just introduce yourself, Victoria, so everyone knows who you are uh, and tell everyone what you do. Hi, um, I'm Victoria Morris. I'm a primary head teacher here at Elm Park Primary, which is based in Hornchurch uh, in the London Borough of Havering. Okay, thank you, Victoria. And um, we're gonna come back to you for your expertise and wisdom shortly. Um, Matt, over to you, can you just say hello? Yes, I will. Um, so I'm Matthew Pearson. I'm a, an education consultant at Learning by Questions. I've uh, been working for them a couple of years now and very much uh, helping schools to find out what LBQ is, whether it fits with what they want to do, and then making sure they get on board and they're, they're used to it. I'm based in Bolton um, near Manchester, but actually I'm not sure locations matter anymore because you know, in a Zoom world, I could just as well be on the, you know, on Mars as long as I've got an internet connection. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, so uh, I'm going to put a, a couple of questions on your screen, everybody. I can see one or two people firing some questions through. So if you're having any connection issues, don't worry. I'll, I'll try and resolve these as we go through. And uh, everything's going to get recorded. So if people can't connect, uh, you'll be able to watch this retrospectively. Um, so, uh, three questions coming up on your screen. Uh, you need to go through all three questions uh, and then press submit at the end. So they should be now on your device. So give us uh, your answers uh, and I'll pose those um, results in 30 seconds or so. Okay, so while you're doing that, just some reminders. Um, so what we're gonna be doing in this session, everyone, is looking at um, the seven expectations from the Department for Education here in England. So I know um, there are lots of people tuning in from uh, countries around the world. 
so that might give you some guidance. You might be working in the British context uh, overseas. Uh, so I hope it gives you some kind of food for thought. Um, we're going to look at some of those expectations and consider um, how difficult they are to achieve, you know, from a kind of feedback and engagement perspective also, um, and how we can meet these expectations on already stressed and overworked teachers. And then we're going to talk about the technology. So I'll, I'll share some of the insights and some of the research I've been unpicking uh, throughout the pandemic. And I'll also turn to Matt to just give us a few LBQ uh, demonstrations. You can get a flavor, you can try the little demo and see if it's a resource that you think would be suitable for yourself and for your school. Um, so a um, couple of more seconds or so on the responses and then I'll put the results on your screen. Uh, do fire through uh, some questions on the chat box, everybody. And I'll try and respond to those as we go through. Okay, so here are the results. Uh, so they should all be uh, on your screen now. So take a moment just to scroll through these and I'll just read them out and we can steer our conversation. So greatest challenges in the next few months, uh, overwhelmingly re report teach, uh, sorry, re remote teaching, um, people well-being there and workload feature. So we'll make a note of that. Um, question two, what would you like to keep? Um, so the CPD opportunities. Um, how, how is CPD different to lock, uh, you know, for people watching here in the UK at least, how does CPD uh, remotely uh, differ to the first uh, kind of strict lockdown almost a year ago? Um, is there still an abundance of CPD available or is it harder now we're kind of balancing lots of things? Uh, so send those comments through and I'll respond to those in a moment. Um, Part-time working from home, a shift away from exams. Um, so quite a wide spread of results at access to devices, daily exercise, extra family time. Um, your family not driving you mad just yet. Okay, question three, what do you hope for as a teacher when choosing new resources? So instant feedback, um, overwhelmingly there. So, you know, from my experience of working with lots of ed tech companies uh, for a number of years now through my website, um, seems to be the thing that makes the biggest difference to teacher workload and student engagement. Um, so I'll take those off your screen for now. Uh, we might refer to back to those later. Um, so we're going to get started. We're going to go straight in. Um, so if I can just remind you all to mute your microphones on your side, that would be very helpful. Um, feel free to log off if you need to go, and we'll get this all shared to you in an, an hour or so after we finish. Um, so it's just for a little context, so you can just forgive me for a moment. In lockdown three, the government here in England issued a new set of expectations um, of how schools can deliver remote learning. Um, so we're going to unpick each of those um, seven expectations and discuss them and where, where we can, we'll ask Matt to just do a little demo of LBQ, as well as sharing some insights in terms of how you can meet these expectations. So let's go straight to number one, Victoria. Uh, setting assignments that are meaningful, ambitious, and in different subjects. How has your school responded to this remote teaching uh, situation that you're in? Um, well, we are fortunate that we decided probably three or four years ago that we wanted to go down the Google route and use G Suite um, to support teaching and learning within school and also to look at how it might extend out of school. So we use um, Google Classroom, um, Google Meet for most of our remote um, learning sessions. And um, what happens is that the teachers plan, um, we use the same curriculum in school as we do for remote teaching. So we're not planning two different sets of teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. And the teachers will put their, all their planning is through Google Slides. So they sure. put down everything in Google Slides and they make it so that it's accessible to children in school and also for remote learning purposes. So they use all different kinds of resources, videos, um, uh, you know, Google Docs. We have workbooks that we use so the children can access and use all their work in that. And I think the other thing that as senior leaders we were mindful of um, when we were looking at remote teaching was looking for resources that would um, sort of sit alongside the, that way of working and be useful to teachers from the point of view that it would hopefully reduce some of the workload. 
Um, and I know that one of our most popular resources is actually LBQ, the Learning by Questions, okay. because um, it is really meaningful. Children, children can access it, they love it. Teachers also can um, set different sort of types of questions and activities, uh, and it goes right across. Um, I know that now we're even using sort of um, some of the reading um, type LBQ activities uh -huh. to support other curriculum areas like history, and because sure. it does lend itself to all those things. I'm interrupt, Victoria. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to explain a bit more how you use LBQ specifically. Could, just for context for everyone watching and listening, could you just describe your school environment, number of kids, teachers, that type of stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, on a, a normal day, we are a two-form entry primary school. We've got um, just under 420 children, um, and that's two classes in each year group of reception to year six. Um, and we are a Google champion school because, again, technology for us has always been an integral part of what we think um, children should experience as part of, of a, a high class education. Um, and so we have been using technology to support teaching and learning for, for a long time. And we're also an exceedingly inclusive school. So we've got um, probably just over 20% of our children have got special needs um, with quite a lot of children with social and emotional needs um, and challenging behavior. So when we're looking at how to support children in school and also with remote learning, we have to take all of that into account to try to make sure that what we're going to use is going to work and be engaging as well as support teachers in being able to do all the things that they need to do um, in terms of knowing where the children are at, assessing them, giving them feedback. Um, so, And were you using the LBQ before the pandemic, Victoria? Yes, um, we started probably about two, three years ago, um, and it's become part of our staple um, diet in terms of um, the way that we use it. It's, um, we ask staff to use it predominantly so that they have to use it um, to pre-assess, so they will, before they do any kind of teaching in maths or um, reading, they'll do a little pre-assessment with the children using LBQ um, and use specific sets of questions and it can be differentiated which is also fabulous mm -hmm. so you haven't got just a blanket test that every child's trying to work their way through and mm -hmm. um, you can make the questions relevant to to each group of children's ability um, and then they use it as part of their their teaching um, so that they can get because it is such a fabulous tool for that instant feedback um, and I think that's what our staff liked even before remote learning was introduced, that it's real time, the children are involved in the activity, um, staff can see straight away how the children are progressing, which questions they might be struggling with, yeah. and then they can intervene immediately. And that's been happening within the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then we use it again at the end of a set of teaching as a sort of a post assessment to check actually what have the children understood and learned, um, and also how do we need to plan ahead for those children that maybe need a little more support or for those children who have clearly got that and actually we need to now be challenging them further. So before I go to Matt just we do a quick little demo and let's just everyone have a look at LBQ. Victoria the, the second expectation from the government was to deliver three hours of remote learning each day um, yeah. One, is that sensible or achievable? Two, how much of this could LBQ uh, offer? Uh, and how, how and what do you think of that? Um, looking at actually what our children are doing, because we decided that we weren't going to do two separate types of planning, that actually we're asking teachers to plan using their Google Slides what they would teach in a normal day um, across the curriculum. I think we are finding that children have got at least three to four hours a day um, of work that they can, you know, crunch their way through um, and that includes using LBQ on a regular basis because um, again LBQ is it's individual because you can have different types of question sets you can set the length so if you want something more meaty than perhaps just a worksheet that's maybe only got 10 or 15 questions you know you can do that using LBQ so that actually for some tasks they might be longer 
um, than others. And then in other instances, we just want a quick five minute, you know, here's a little um, refresher or here's an introduction. Let's get um, you back into the sort of swing of things. Mm -hmm. So it's very versatile from that perspective. So can LBQ, you know, although you want your kids perhaps fixed to a platform for the entire day and you want to mix up activities, is there scope for LBQ to deliver much of what you want to, to offer perhaps? Yeah, no, we use it right across the curriculum, as I was saying. I mean, definitely um, we use it for reading. We use it for spelling, uh, grammar. Uh, we use it for maths um, and we use it now across the curriculum, probably still to reinforce basic skills. Um, so, for example, this week I was looking at planning um, and I saw in year five, they were using a quest some question sets which had a historical background, which had come from um, the reading section, but were linked to the actual the history that the children were working on. And it was just a five, 10 minute thing. It wasn't, you know, the whole part of the lesson, but it just added and gave them the opportunity to um, find out actually what did they know and, and what don't they know and also find out a little bit more. So we're using it across the curriculum in lots of different ways. Okay, lovely. So we'll unpick some of those um, areas in a moment. Now, Matt, um, can I bring you in here? Is it possible for us to give us a quick taster in kind of three to five minutes uh, for people new and uh, to LBQ and want to kind of see what it can do? Yes, it is. I'm just going to share my screen. Tell me when you can see it. Yeah, you can see it, yeah. Great, right. So um, I'm going to keep this deliberately brief. And if I start going on, Ross, just, just cut I me will, off. I will. I'm going to disappear and just sort out some technical yeah. stuff behind the scenes to let people in. So I'll yeah, no worries. Right. So um, our website lives at lbq.org. Um, you can see all of our content without needing a login. You can just go to question sets. Uh, and for instance, if you wanted to look at maths, click on maths. Um, and all of our question sets will be listed. Just wait for those to load up. So every one of these is a question set, normally with 30 questions. And they're 30 questions which are set in levels, so they become more challenging. So this isn't 30 questions that the kids are going to knock off in 10 minutes. It's going to take them some time to work through it. The great thing is, because we use a level, because we have a, a, a mastery approach, both in our maths and our uh, English and science as well, what that actually means is that the earlier levels all pupils can start to make progress. The ones who are really confident will get further on in the question set, get start getting into reasoning and problem solving. So you can look at all of our content. You don't need a login, it's just all there. And if you if you click on any one of these, you can see all of the questions and the content. I'll just quickly log in and I'll show you how you set a question set. Deliberately gonna do this quickly. So this isn't, you know, don't you don't need to necessarily follow it, but I click on maths. So what I can do is, let's say I've got some year fives that I need to sort out. Um, click on this. I'm looking at year five. Down the left is the national curriculum content. So basically, our starting point is the English national curriculum. Uh, we look at what teachers have to deliver and then we build. We have built question sets to, to look at that. So if I click on measurement, I've got all the question sets here. Um, click on a question set and it loads up. Now, if I want to start this question set so the pupils can start working on it in their own on through their own devices, I just click on start. I'm going to choose informal class because that's the quickest to get um, started with. And I'm actually going to add a new name and I'll call this teacher toolkit. You would only have to do this once because most primary teachers, if you're primary colleagues, will you know, you'll create your group and it'll be there. I'll click on start. I'll now get a code. This is the only code you need to send to the pupils is BCR. If you want to play along with the question set, you need to go to this address here, which is uh, www.lbq.org forward slash task. And then you would need to enter the code BCR there, as you can see on my screen. You click on go. You can then put your name in. And then you have joined the teacher's lesson. A teacher can set up to three question sets at the same time, which is incredibly useful both in the classroom. You might do it for differentiation, as, as Victoria said. During remote learning, you might want to set a variety of tasks, a math task and an English task with some reading. It's really up to teachers how they balance it. There's no real ideal way of using LBQ because this is a teacher tool that really puts the judgment of the teacher front and center. We're not AI. We're not trying to you know, be cleverer than you in teaching. We're just giving you a great tool that works. So there's lots of different ways of using it, 
But if I just want to answer the question, I click on it and off I go. I'm now joined as a pupil. One of the key things about LBQ is feedback on every question. So if I get it wrong, I get told it's wrong, which a lot of systems will do. But then it actually gives me a clue about how I might have another go and move on. So now I can move that question through. So basically what's happening now is your pupils are all working through in self-paced mode. And they are, um, uh, they're all working at their own pace. And this works just as well in the classroom as it does for the remote learners. So Victoria said they're not setting a special home curriculum that's different from the school, you know, the in-school curriculum, the classroom curriculum. LBQ works with that. You send the code home to your remote learners. You give this code to the pupils in the classroom. They join on whatever device they've got. And LBQ works on pretty much any, you know, anything that's got the internet will work with LBQ, tablets, Chromebooks, laptops, as you'd expect. And then the home learners and the classroom learners um, all work through it at their own pace. And we mark it and give it and, and give the results back to the, to the teacher. I'll show you what the results page looks like. Here we go. Here's the results. So these some people have already joined. Well done if you've joined. And you can see here, this is a teacher matrix. It updates in real time. So every time a pupil answers a question, green dot for correct. Amber means they got it right, but needed a few more goes. Um, so there'll be a number and red is wrong. So it's live marking and live feedback to the pupils. And that's probably one of the most important things about it. If you have more than one task running, they just run at the top of your taskbar so the teacher can just flick between them. And obviously in class, you monitor this in real time and there are things you can do. For instance, you will you may want to pause a, the, the question set and do a bit of micro teaching. You may want to address issues. You can do that in the class. Remote teaching, you probably just leave this running and then collect it later on. I don't know what, if that's what your teachers do, Victoria. They kind of leave the question set running and then have a kind of what's the word, like a mop up session and say, well done, but you know, you've got to remember that when you're doing perimeter, you need to do this. Is that how it's worked? Initially, yeah, but now I know that actually they've managed to incorporate it into their live lessons. So they will say, right, go to LBQ, start your, and then they will track this, um, you know, little format and actually then pick up and say, right, I need to speak to, to this group of children and, and do it while they're actually live. Um, yes, but, uh, but it works both ways. It does work both ways. Yeah. I mean, we're working quite a low tech approach for a school that isn't doing live teaching and we're not going to get involved in whether the live teaching is a good idea or not, because I think that's too much of a complex debate. But we do support sending the question set home and giving the pupil something to do, um, as well as if you want to run this alongside live teaching. And a number of my schools actually do that and it works very well. But in a nutshell, that's it. That's what LBQ is. I'm done, Ross. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, uh, Victoria, I want to ask the next question in terms of, um, the, you know, the asynchronous and synchronous dialogue. How are you um, addressing that, you know, th you know, perhaps through LBQ or through your kind of software that you're using? Um, are your teachers recording videos, doing some live sessions. What's your method? Yeah, we're using a mixture. Um, so for some things, it might be that teachers might record themselves um, and they will use LBQ because the other great thing about it is that it's got a lot of um, teaching resources that you can use you know, with your Google Slides. Um, so they can be actually talking through and working alongside um, whilst um, they're, they're showing LBQ. So they might make videos like that. They use the selection of you know commercial type videos um, we've tried different ones, Oak Academy, Purple Mash, LGFL. Um, so we use a selection as well as um, then trying to incorporate a number of sort of live sessions that allow um, that sort of interaction that, that we're, we're missing currently. And can I ask, you know, is ICT a, a, a continual priority in your school in terms of teacher training? What, did you have yeah. to upskill for the pandemic or was this already um, practice embedded? No, I think... Um, teachers would say that they've been on a, you know, a, a much steeper learning curve in terms of their ICT and technical skills in the last 12 months. But ICT is a big part of what we believe, you know, makes uh, our school um, work really well. So it's always been integral to our school improvement plan. So I think probably in terms of when it first happened and that the first lockdown came 
we were in a pretty good position because we were already using um, a, you know, LBQ. We could see how it could work with remote teaching. We were using our Google Classroom and Google Meet in a similar way to now, but that's just been accelerated and you know expanded a hundredfold since then. <laughs> Now, uh, in terms of disadvantaged students, have all your, you know, the, the next DfE expectation is, you know, checking for people engagement. So, you know, uh, you would do the normal things in a normal school situation. But how have you responded to the pandemic, uh, laptop devices, those types of things? Yeah, well, again, um, because we've been using Google uh, and our parents and our children are used to that format. Um, just uh, we sent out a Google form in, in March when we first had the pandemic to look at what um, need there was. And then we did it again just before um, the end of term just to see what we needed. Um, and pretty much at the moment, all of our equipment um, bar sort of iPads, which we keep within school for children to use, pretty much all of our equipment is out on loan. Uh, we also took advantage of the, the government's, um, you know, we could get extra computers and also 4G routers because yeah. we found that a number of children were trying to work from phones on their, you know, parents' data, which isn't isn't ideal if you're going to be doing something three to four hours a day. Um, and we tracked very carefully um, who hasn't got what uh, and encouraged people to tell us. And, and if you're not online, then we're ringing up and saying, what, what's the problem? How can we help um, so that we can make sure? And I think at the moment, we've probably got close to 100 children who've been given some right. form of device to help. So all, all your students have a connection of some kind to access yeah. Uh, and, this, and this was before or, or, or a response to the pandemic? Uh, this time we've really tightened up on that. Previously, okay. we kind of gave out sort of hard copies to certain parents and families who yeah. were really... Any tips for anyone struggling or still trying to get one or two devices? Um, any resources or contacts you can recommend? Um, I know that um, we kind of look out for uh, anybody um, that might be um, getting rid of their old laptops. And I know that there is um, a sort of government system where you can join and anybody any business that might be giving away their old laptops because you can um, use the neverware software to convert your any kind of laptop into a chromebook yeah. um, if it's too old you do sometimes you lose the camera functionality so for live lessons and things like that it's not so great okay. but we've benefited greatly probably got 30 or 40 laptops that have gone out um just in january alone right from okay. um a company that were um getting rid of all their old stuff so we we used the neverware software and turned them into great um, i've just put a, a, a link into the chat box for everyone and um, this is uh from someone i know at the british film institute who i think set this up and i think it's just the database to um collate what schools and this is for england everyone watching um you know a kind of map of where people can donate laptops so perhaps People watching might want to share that with their friends on Facebook and those types of things. You might find one, one or two people can find a school near you or someone else and uh, find a device. So that might um, help in some cases where people are still struggling. Now, the next um, DfE recommendation, Park for Education, uh, asks for schools to gauge how well pupils are progressing through the curriculum. So I'm going to come to you first, Matt. Could you show us kind of some data side of things, the geeky side, where I can see and track and in a bit more depth and detail, what kids are doing um, as a teacher in the classroom, how I could respond to how students are progressing through. Sure, yeah. I mean, teachers do love data. Um, and it's good because well, LBQ it. is, LBQ generates an awful lot of data. Um, but we hope that that's useful for you. Um, so whenever you run a question set, we always save the results. You don't have to go and say to LBQ, oh, that was a good, you know, um, set that my kids have done I want to save that we just save everything by default if you ever wanted to discard a question set you can but mostly it's just going to run and the data is going to pile up so what happens now with LBQ if I just I'll just reshare my screen remember to do that um, so on the on the my LBQ page um, as you run question sets we basically just list them here so for instance if I was to move back to my demo class um, and this is looking at maths, um, all of these uh, squares are a question set that I've run. Um, and that 
uh, and and it will actually tell me what it is and average score and completed score. Um, and if I click it, it will actually allow me to actually load through the results. So the question matrix that I showed you very briefly before, although that runs during the session, that actually is saved all the while. So this is what a matrix might look like if you've got 20 odd pupils and they ran a task for say 40 minutes. Every single response from every single pupil is saved here. So for instance, if I wanted to you know, focus on a particular pupil, so let's see how Matt did. Uh, these aren't real kids, by the way, this is my test data. Um, then I can actually see every single question that that pupil answered within that question set. So it's great for teachers in planning what they do next. You can see how well the pupils have engaged with a particular question set. You can plan what you need to do. Do you need to reteach something or can you move on? We even have question sets now um, that, that allow you to assess whether it's um, appropriate for pupils to move on in maths based on some um, the NCETM um, uh, guidelines. So it's great for planning, for teachers, you know, planning what they do. And it's also great for accountability as well, because you've got this data. And if the worst came to the worst, and sorry for mentioning the O word, but Ofsted turned up or, you know, wanted a Zoom meeting with your SLT and say, what do you do with your remote learning? Well, one of the things that you'll be able to show them is your LBQ with a clear sense of how they've been engaged. Now, Matt, we don't want to talk about Ofsted. Um, I've got no, a few questions sorry, here. Actually. We've got a few <laughs> yes. questions uh, in the chat box from um, people just asking, is it just for core subjects or just secondary um, kind of context? Give we, us a are, we are English, maths and science. And we start, we've got a little bit of LBQ content in Key Stage 1. We have everything for Key Stages 2, 3 and 4 for those topics, as well as some cross-curricular reads in primary for geography and history that Victoria alluded okay. to. I've got and if, if, if people want to know about the content, you know, it's all there under the question set. So you can actually have a look. <laughs> Nothing's behind a, you know, behind a magic curtain. All of our question sets are publicly available. I've got a question here from Hazel, Matt. And um, what is the range of question types uh, for science uh, in particular? Um, yes. And is it more suited to primary or secondary? It's suited to both. We have, you know, we have colleagues using it for teaching secondary science as well as lots using it in primary science. The question types are multiple choice, including multiple response. So one answer or two answers. We have um, ordering activities, which are particularly useful actually in all topics, you know, put these in the following rank order, you drag and drop them. And then we have questions which we code as blue. These are open-ended questions. Now LBQ doesn't mark the blue questions. We haven't found a way, we haven't found software intelligent enough to actually mark an open-ended question. These aren't long essay answers. They're, they're, they're examples where we might ask a pupil to explain why something is so. And so the blue questions just require the teacher to actually look at the content and just do a little bit of quick checking, um, just it's there. If a teacher doesn't want the blue questions, as Victoria said, LBQ is massively customizable mm -hmm. and you can remove the blue questions very easily if you want. Okay, thank you, Matt. So we'll come back to another little kind of demo in a, in a moment. Um, Victoria, I'd want to ask about how um, you've adapted your curriculum, you know, given, you know, learning loss, knowing what we know about retrie uh, retrieval practice and memory, uh, you know, pupil well-being and stuff like that. Just give us an overview of how you've responded, you know, all the dialogue about SATs and things like that, and, 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 and how are you having a best fit for your school community? Um, we, well, again, we've tried where possible to make sure that we are trying to cover our curriculum as we normally would. Obviously, certain aspects of, of curriculum subjects are not possible, certainly for remote learning. But I mean, for example, for science, um, it, with the remote teaching, it's been difficult in terms of that you can't organise necessarily great practical investigations. You can suggest things for the children to do. Um, so we have relied more heavily probably on the science um, question sets and LBQ um, to drive, you know, making sure that we keep up to speed with children learning um, the appropriate science curriculum. Um, and that's been easy to just drop in um, dependent on what subject and what year group um, without too much more work. For yeah. to to and, and how are you, you know, from a workload perspective, how, how are your teachers, your school adapted to providing, you know, 
a a bit of assessment or that feedback and just kind of checking in with your your whole school community not just your vulnerable kids how, how have you responded um well again because we've always put technology at the heart of things we've also expected every member of staff to be able to manage some form of, of technology so um, you know teachers are doing live lessons and using lots of different resources like lbq to try to make sure that they're teaching and also getting feedback and lbq is fabulous for assessment i mean i, I think at the moment that that is probably the, the biggest element within our um, remote teaching um, that teachers are finding really useful. But in terms of being able to make sure that we're, we're meeting and, and meeting all the children's needs, including our vulnerable children, you know, we've got some who are in school, but if not, then all our support staff, our learning support staff, they are also trained in using Google Meet and they're expected to join in with Google Classroom. Um, we have breakout rooms so that if you are um, a SEND child, then you've got a room that you can go to um and um then you can be taught and have somebody there to talk to um and similarly with lbq sometimes we'll set a, a, a differentiated and i think matt said you can have up to three sets running at any one yeah. time have you got a particular success story perhaps maybe with a vulnerable child without going into specific details um could you give us a little success story of how lbq might have rescued them yeah I mean, I think it's rescued a lot of children and a lot of parents, I would say. Um, firstly, with the vulnerable children, we've got um, one boy who absolutely um, will not engage in, in kind of literacy in any kind of written form. Right. Um, but within school, we started using LBQ in tiny little, you know, question sets for him just to get him into the habit of doing some spag doing a bit of reading yeah. and because it's online uh, and it, it's, it is engaging we have 100% engagement with our children um, right. and actually when we look at we try and break down the remote learning and look at you know who's uploading work back on their workbooks what's the percentage who actually logged into LBQ today by far and away the biggest percentage of children go for the, the, any type of activity like the LBQ yeah. And, and how are you managing, you know, a, a kind of 24-7 connectedness and that kind of ICT well-being for your children, you know, the online etiquette? And um, what kind of procedures have you had in place? Um, well, we've got um, we've got a live lesson uh, etiquette. Uh, we've also done um, sort of a, a thing for parents around this is what remote learning looks like. We've been very clear about what the expectations are for everybody. So we've made, you know, a little um, section. This is what children, the expectations are. If you're watching, can they grab something off your website, your school website, to have a look? Yeah, yeah. It's We've got on our website, um, there's a section called remote learning. Um, and then the policy, all the information that parents get, the live lesson rules, all of that is there. Um, and they can, they can, anybody can have a look and, and take that. Okay, great. Well, I'll shout out. I'll put that in the chat box in a moment. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, Matt, I'm going to uh, put you back into a kind of geeky corner here. Um, how can I uh, look, you know, from a live perspective, uh, a live feedback perspective, how can I tune into the data, maybe in a, a kind of more finer detail and maybe respond to individual students? Can you show us a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So, um, We've still got our task running that we, we set up before in my li little micro demo. Um, although some of you have moved away from it, I can see because you've gone yellow, but you can easily drop back in. Um, and if you were to, um, if you click on a particular pupil, it will drop into all of their results and you'll be yeah, able to actually- Can you share your screen, Matt? That's... All right, sorry, forgot to do <laughs> I knew I'd do that in the end. Yeah, here we go. Um, Right, so what I've, what I've done there, I brought the results up and I've just clicked on a, I'll show you what I did. I clicked on a pupil and that allowed me to pull up the results for that particular pupil and how they've answered. So you can actually see if there's an issue with a misconception at the kind of pupil level and then take appropriate action, with, albeit in the classroom or maybe remotely. What you can also do is you can actually drill down onto an individual question. So if you were to, um, and for this, I'll use my sample data because it's, it's more um, 
it's more representative. You can see here on my, my sample data that question 25 was giving a lot of trouble to the pupils. Um, now, if I click on this and just view the responses, we collect all the responses together, including the most common wrong answers. So again, a teacher is gonna be able to have a quick look at that and then work out if there is a misconception that's happening on what they need to do next. So they need to reteach or reinforce a certain point. Um, and then you have the ability, particularly if you're live teaching, you can actually bring the question up and you could share this via your live feed and you can actually start working through the content including the um, including adding ink. And if you want to, if you hit this button, this will actually send out the, the um, this particular question to all of the pupil devices. So you're not kind of locked into one thing or another with LBQ. As I said, it's all about teacher professional judgment. We'll, we'll send the questions out to the pupils and let them work through them. But the teacher can drop in on multiple data points and then make a decision about what to do next. Now, um, Matt, you mentioned earlier that it's not, you're, not, you're not an artificial intelligence platform. So this, uh, this is something that the teacher would have to assign. It's not necessarily um, something that would automatically happen. No, it isn't. Well, I mean, I can, I can talk about typical workflows for, for teachers, both in the classroom and for remote. And basically, you look at what your pupils want to do and you find your question set. That's not going to take very long because we've got question sets to support it because we are complete for maths, English and science. So you can always find the question set. So in terms of teacher time and workload, that's going to take them a couple of minutes at most. We've got some handy planning tools so they can actually plan ahead which question sets they're going to use on a particular day. And we will put them in the My LBQ space and they will actually be there and they just need to be started. So you can see I've actually got a question set today that I can click on start. And then what happens, you just click on start. Every time you run LBQ for a particular day, you get a, a, a unique code. So the code I'm using here, the BCR, that will be, that's unique, my unique code for the day, but it will be a different code tomorrow. So then the final task of the remote learners is just to paste that link onto your platform so the pupils can access it. If you actually pick up the link from here, if I was to copy that into Google Classroom, if I was, let's say if I worked at Vicky's school, um, that's got the pin embedded. So that'll be a clickable link, the pupils click on it, all they have to do then is add their name and then they're in and they're completing question sets because we're really big on it being simple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this has got to be something that teachers can use every day. It's crucial that it's an easy platform to use. And that's what we've really focused a lot of our development activities on. I'm going to come to work though in a second. Can I, I put you in the corner, Matt? Could you, uh, I know this is a very hard question for uh, people to answer sometimes, but what are the kind of broad costs per pupil, per school, that type oh, of stuff? Oh, that's actually quite an easy, that's quite an easy question. Funny I was really worried though, you put me in the corner. Um, <laughs> Yes, so it's a subscription model. So you need a you need a license if you're a teacher and it gives you access to everything. So you right. don't have to say, oh, I want to use a mass content. You get everything. It's £250 per year for a teacher. Or you and can have a three year license for a slight reduction of six hundred and twenty five. And that's how, how many questions are on? Last time I checked, it was 60,000, does it? I'm it's, sure. near a, it's near a 90,000. So roughly speaking, we've got 3000 question sets. That's roughly 90,000 questions. So it would be very difficult for a teacher, either during lockdown or in, a, you know, when we're back to normal, mm -hmm. to use up all of our content. Now, you um, actually have the questions in a book format, don't you, I believe? We do. We do. We actually have, uh, we, we publish them in books. I'll just get one. Yeah, they're, they're enormous and they're a fabulous resource. So I just thought I'd mention it. There's one Matt's got there. Yeah, so these are the these are the question sets printed out. So because teachers sometimes like to go through and scribble on them and plan. So we have kind of ended up doing some publishing stuff um, as well. But the main thing is the contents there. And it's also customizable as well. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one thing that some teachers do, um, we've got a feature in the platform called question collection. That allows you to pick and mix questions from all over LBQ. So for instance, let's say you've got some learners um, and you want them to do a little bit of fractions, but you also want to throw some measurement in. 
Well, you can take questions from anywhere in the platform and add them into a little kind of shopping basket, a little bit like your Amazon shopping, shopping basket, add them all into there. When you've got them all together, you can just start that as a question set and all of the questions will then be available. So it's incredibly configurable uh, as a system, as well as just being great off the peg as well for a really busy teacher who's just got to get through the week, Excellent. you know, without having a breakdown. So for people watching, pick your questions through and I'll ask them on your behalf. So uh, Matt, a uh, scenario, let's say I'm a large secondary school, maybe 1800 kids. Uh, the cost still going to be about £600 for a three year license? No, if you're... Um, if if you're a larger school and you need to buy multiple licenses, then we do start to do volume discounts. So the, okay. the price of that license, the most you'll ever pay for a license will be two hundred and fifty pounds. I've got another pay. question. A tiny small school with three teachers. So I don't know a number of pupils, but I, I, I guess maybe let's call it uh, sixty or eighty kids. Yeah. Um, so that would need that would just need three teacher licenses at the standard cost. Okay. Um, so send me through your scenarios and I'll pose them for you. Um, Victoria, uh, just before we, I ask you a question on kind of workload, could you just call out your school website address where people can maybe look at your policies in terms of ICT and things? Yeah, it's um, www.elmparkprimary.co.uk. Okay, thank you. Um, so how has LBQ made your life as a head teacher and all your teachers' workload smarter? Uh, I think it definitely has. And I did ask staff to sort of give me the five, you know, best things about certainly LBQ as long and some of the other resources that we're using um, before I came on to this. Uh, and that was the, the biggest thing was that they felt that it was a reduction in time because it is such a large resource. You're not having to scrabble about to try to find questions. Um, they often say that, you know, you can get a worksheet, but it doesn't quite fit the bill. Um, if you don't like the question set, then you can customise it. So I think from in terms of workload and time reduction, it's, it's all there for you. You can also then pick out parts um, that you want to use along with your teaching to create videos or to just use on your slides. And again, those books, that's what our teachers use them for. They flick through, look at, you know, if it's measurement and it gives you very clear sort of pictures of what the the slides and the teaching would look like and then they can just incorporate that into their slides very quickly. I think the other big thing for them is that particularly with this remote learning is the assessment side of things um, and that they've been very worried about how are we going to assess how children are progressing and how are we going to get you know feedback because mm -hmm. it's all well and good looking at a worksheet that somebody's completed but you know we're not sure how they did it and you know how much support they've had um, whereas with the LBQ it is so clear because you can see straight away um, you know if a child hasn't got it right the first time and the other thing I would say I know it's not to do with workload but it's to do with parents response one of the things that we've had from parent feedback about LBQ is that they like it because actually children can be pretty autonomous when yeah. they are using it because it gives them that sort of hint to if I've got a question wrong you know here's a hint to try to help you think about maybe why it's wrong and and what the answer is um, and they can work pretty independently and so our parents have said they they like things like that because the children don't need so much supervision yeah um, um, so it sounds all very rosy what, what, what you must have one or two challenges at the moment victoria could you just uh, maybe reassure everyone that they're not alone <laughs> uh, what, are, what are the current challenges that you've got i mean it's still you know we still have children and parents who are not um online all the time and they're not completing work um we still have issues around um you know the connectivity sometimes um and also i think we have um it's still really hard work and i know that my teachers are probably working as hard as they've ever worked but maybe in a slightly different way uh, and we are trying to be clever about that um with you know really fine-tuning and looking at what resources best support the reduction of workload um, but you know we, we've still got all the usual teething problems that, uh, that other people have had um, even though we're slightly further along the journey um, but it, it's just like being in school you know as an SLT we're monitoring every day who's logged on who's done their work who hasn't you know we're contacting parents we get we've got a help desk so um, 
children phone up, parents phone up. Um, and, and I kind of, it's, it's a different way of working, but it's still full on and very busy. Um, and, you know, the biggest issue is how much are our children learning and making progress? Um, and, and what are your hopes, you know, post pandemic, Victoria? You know, you were a technology focused kind of school before the pandemic. Um, lessons learned or things that you'd like to kind of keep going forward? Well, I, I've said to my staff for years that my ultimate vision is that we would have, I think the new um, phrase is blended learning, but yeah. I've always said that what I want is that I want this form of technology to be used like we are now for remote learning, but actually in school so that you could set, you know, LBQ and question sets and children, we've got children who work on those in school with their headsets and they get on and they independently learn mm -hmm. whilst the teacher then can take smaller groups. Uh, and also we're trying to give children more independence in when and where and how they learn. And I'd like to see if we can take some of what we've learned around having to provide remote learning and see how we can make that work within school mm -hmm. so that we can really, you know, give children wings in terms of being independent and yeah. driving their own learning forward. Um, so that's what I would like to take from it. Great. Uh, um, so thank you, Victoria. Matt, I'm going to ask if, if possible you can... Um... Give us a little student demo just to finish. I'm just putting back on your screens, everyone, just the results from the start. So just in case you joined late or missed it. Um, first question that I post is you should be able to see these on your screen. What's the greatest challenge ahead? So we've said, you know, we haven't got a, a representative kind of response here, but, you know, the, uh, the statistics on the screen, remote teaching, exams, pupil well-being. And um, question two um, you know, access to CPD, um, which is what most people have, I guess, benefited from. Uh, the, you know, the shift away from exams, we'd like to kind of keep um, access to devices, you know, more family time, those types. And then question three, um, you know, what do you hope for when choosing school resources? So that instant feedback, you know, I've been uh, a fan of LBQ for a number of um, years now. And uh, all these ed tech solutions, they often provide the kind of broadly speaking the same types of stuff a different color a different twist but when you get um kind of a, a, a sophisticated a sophisticated platform such as lbq with such a comprehensive range of questions and um, it really is a good resource to reduce teacher workload and um, matt can i bring you in one last time to just maybe show us what a student would see if they log in have you, you got that possibility to yeah share? of course okay. yeah sure and i'll we'll just finish uh, up. reshare my screen yeah so i mean we are we are so simple in terms of teacher, so in terms of pupil login, that you may be looking for something to be more complicated because in terms of other kind of sign on systems, we really have got it to the point where all you need is a three digit code. So like, here's just a little Android tablet. And this is the LBQ app. So you can load this onto your Android tablet or whatever. And because I'm running a question set that's running under BCR, all I do is put BCR in, BCR, Right. It then checks it's a valid code. If it wasn't, it would say enter a valid code. I put my name in. I click on go and I've joined. I click on a question set and I'm answering it. It is as simple as that. We have another way of using LBQ where what we call a tracked class. That's not so good for remote learning, but it's great in the classroom. And that allows a pupil to always log back in under the same name. So what they do is they create, basically they create an LBQ account with a teacher and then they choose a passcode that's very simple, like, you know, one blue chair and they log back in. That doesn't take much longer than actually logging in with a code, but that's all you have to do. You just need a device pointed at lbq.org forward slash task and the three digit code and then you're in and then you're running. It's as simple as that. Oh, I better unmute myself. Thank you, Matt. Um, right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of formally bring things to an end and then I'm going to respond uh, to people's questions in the chat box and I'll keep this part of the recording and share with it. So if you've an answered any questions and not had them answered, uh, ping them back, in, back into the chat box and I'll do my best to respond. Um, Victoria, any final words from you? Any words of wisdom? Um, just, you know, if anybody from this was thinking, oh, you know, is, is LBQ worth uh, a worthwhile resource? I can't recommend it enough. 
to be honest to you. And that's from teacher feedback um, as a head teacher in terms of how it supports. And also um, from the, what the children say. Um, and actually it speaks volumes because the progress that our children make um, using that uh, and actually the quality of teaching. So I, I, if anybody's unsure, then, you know, please, please try it because I can't tell you how fantastic a resource it is in terms of supporting high quality teaching and learning. Thank you, Victoria. So just a, a recap, because I've seen one or two comments in the chat box. Uh, Victoria's a head teacher at Elm Park Primary in Haverin, East London, Victoria. Avery, yes. check my yes. London knowledge. Um, so East London Primary School, uh, and she's got a few resources. Um, and I'll ping in our contact details in the Eventbrite notification once we finish. Um, Matt, any final words of wisdom from yourself? Um, really, I suppose I just want to go back to, well, I want to talk about, just briefly, LBQ was created by a guy called Tony Can, who was the founder of Promethean. So he's been working with technology for years. Um, and he wanted a system that made a real difference to the lives of children. And that's why he invested a, a considerable amount of his time and effort and money into learning by questions. He realized that teachers had to have the content to work with it and that pupils actually had to be able to work through, uh, you know, question sets at their own pace. And, you know, the worksheet is very much a, it's probably not even a 20th century, century technology, it's more like a 19th century technology. So he just realized that technology could do such a better job. Um, and his, his kind of hard work and vision has driven LBQ to the point where last week we marked during the working week, Monday to Friday, 3.8 million questions. Um, so we are, you know, we're providing a lot of powerful learning for the whole of, certainly the whole of the United Kingdom. And we're increasingly looking internationally as well. So we're well worth having a look at. So thank you, Matt. So any questions from anyone? I'm going to go through um, the chat box shortly. Otherwise, kind of formality things are finished. I'm going to send over the recording to you in about an hour or so. But just to kind of recap on those seven uh, expectations from Department for Education here in England, how LBQ, and you've heard from Victoria herself, explain how at least this platform can help meet those needs. So number one is setting assignments uh, that are meaningful in, diff uh, you know, at least our core subjects, deliver some uh, number of hours of remote learning each day, allows teachers to send clear explanations, upload content to various platforms, a system that will check for people engagement, gauge how well they're progressing through the curriculum and provide we uh, feedback instantly, not just um, weekly, which is uh, Department for Education expectations. And finally, um, reducing that teacher workload, helping teachers to adjust pace, you know, with that, that, that differentiation, we'll all know um, responding to pupils is one of our greatest burdens. Um, so a great resource. That's why I'm pr uh, proud to share it here with you all. Um, really fabulous, worth checking out. You've got a kind of insight overview to the costs from Matt. I'm just going to remind you of the, plat uh, the website uh, in the chat box. So here it comes where you can book a little demo um, or have a little nose around the website. So there it is in the chat box, everybody, lbq.org forward slash remote learning. Um, my name's Ross Wheel. I'm your host of Teacher Toolkit. Uh, I've been joined by Matt, the lovely Matt. Thank you, Matt, for all your wonderful demos. And the very hardworking and positive uh, Victoria Morris, head teacher at Elm Park Primary. And thank you to all you guys for joining from wherever you are. Um, I hope you're well, keep safe, and keep up the good work. Uh, it's formal finish from here, but I'm going to just hang on the line if people have got any questions. Um, so you want to do a little uh, live question with us now just stay on the line otherwise log off uh, i'm just gonna have a little snoop through the chat box uh if you want to do a little kind of uh, virtual wave as you disappear um and have a lovely evening <laughs> uh otherwise uh, take care and all the best thanks for joining we never used to do waves at the end of meetings but everybody i, I took part in a really meetings. nice zoom the other day someone played some really sad piano music and we all had to wave and kind of sync and it, it was quite a nice little moment actually right. <laughs> i might start doing that um <laughs> right let's look at some chat box questions uh, range of questions do the question set match exam specifications um was one question yes is the answer okay. um i mean if it's specifically um uh, the GCSE content is a little bit challenging because obviously it's less about national curriculum it's more about specific exam boards mm -hmm. um, but 
the broad topics that are that, that pupils have to know so if you take maths they've got to know algebra and stuff yeah. it's covered we are going to do more of our secondary content and we're going to look at making it more specific to actual exam boards so we're not finished developing content mm -hmm. as it is so more of that will probably come later i've got a question from a trainee teacher who wants to kind of have a little trial but not necessarily ask the placement school to have to pay or sign up is that is that something they can do yeah they can sign up for a free account and all the um all the questions are available in teach mode if they want to teach with them and they can also do a limited push out to pupil devices so um they can actually have a go with a live lbq lesson um, and another and free question uh, the free version is it just the question bank or the interactive side of it as well it's it's limited interactivity so um you can set the question set and send it out to your pupils yeah um, there's a couple of limitations the code only works for 90 minutes rather than the full day um, and we we can't store the data after the session we do store the results but we have to strip the pupil names out because of gdpr but if you did want to try it out then the, the trial version is worth looking at okay lovely right i think i've tackled most of those questions if there's anything that i've not now is your last chance otherwise we're all busy people we're all trying to log off um, so this is your final 30 second warning. Okay. Any lockdown tips, Victoria, Matthew? Um, <laughs> <laughs> always have some cold drink in the fridge of whatever <laughs> you need. <laughs> and maybe, you know, try and try and vary your walk around the neighborhood. Yeah. So I used to do the same walk every day and got really bored. So now I've got about four different. Yeah, I've done my dog walk in reverse and that was quite exciting the other day. Yeah, because you, you, you see everything backwards. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Fact, to be fair, you get to really see your local neighbourhood in slow motion. So it, you, you, do. You, you do appreciate things a bit better. You're like, oh, they're 37. They still haven't cleaned the car or <laughs> whatever, you know. And you never used to bother that in the old world because you were just. Sorry, what are you doing to manage your mental health? Um, lots of gin and chocolate, really. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> right, everyone, uh, no more questions. Um, I'll post, uh, ping this video to everybody in about an hour. Um, thank you from me. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matt. All the yeah. best. And thanks thank for you your time. Bye. That's great. Thanks a lot. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you.